Does it feel like you're getting kicked around by the prices of everything these days? Are you without eagles or just a few shy away from getting that one day a premium? Well, never fear. Golden Eagles for War Thunder is here. Earn Golden Eagles by filling out surveys, playing games, and downloading apps. And it gets even better. If you use my code XJYZK when signing up, you will get an additional 10 Golden Eagles. The app link in my code will be down in the description below. And thank you for your guys' support. This goes a long way to supporting the channel. Now, for the video. Holy sh! This plane is sh! It's slow. It doesn't have any guns. Like, why did they even give me this thing? It's sh! If this is my last game of the night, you better hit something with that thing back there. I mean, seriously, the matchmaker sh! Gaijin sh! Russian bias is sh! This game is sh! Everything sh! It's not me, I swear. What's that sound? What the f are you doing here? Let me line this sh up on your ass. It's okay to be shit. Just don't be in denial about it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. And I got 10 more tips for you. And not the kind you see on your favorite websites. Now, I told you guys 500 likes and I would make a follow-up video. So, here we are, 7,000 likes later. I had no choice but to do this. And I hope that you guys find something useful in here. And just before we get started, I want to thank you guys on the 10,000 subscribers. We are blowing it down here at YouTube. And make sure you're dropping that like. And if we get 1,000 likes on this video, I will make a 10 tips video on top tier planes because you're not allowed to just suck at low tier. And if at any point you disagree with what I'm saying here or want to add to you or have another tip, feel free to share it down in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's get into tip number one, the map. As in any shooter game, the map is very important to you. And when you're in the middle of a furball, it can give you valuable information of what's around you without you actually having to look around. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't look around, but sometimes the mini-map is the first place that you're gonna see somebody. So make sure that you're checking your mini-map quite often, but that's not the only map. You have the full map, which is M on PC, and these buttons for console. If you notice at the beginning of every match, there will be a lot of attention to the maps, and it's usually bombers claiming which base they're gonna take. So if you're bombing, you can definitely utilize that as a tool. And by clicking anywhere on the map, you can place that same exact marker, alerting your friendlies to an enemy's presence. This is pretty important when you know where the enemy is, but they're not spotted on the map and you're trying to zero your team in on them, or you're just trying to grab somebody's attention for some reason. It's your horn in War Thunder. So check your map often and let's get into tip number two, jamming your guns. Now, if you're new to War Thunder, jamming your guns is probably something that happens quite often. As a more experienced player, I tend to really never jam my guns. And what's the difference? Well, as you get better in War Thunder, of course, your aim will get more consistent and you'll know exactly when to let the rounds off. Until then, focus on shooting in smaller controlled bursts, especially if your guns overheat fast. Plus, the more ammo you have, the more people you'll be able to shoot down later in the game without having to land at the airfield and rearm. Also, in your crew points selection screen, weapon maintenance is going to increase the time between failures, aka jams in your guns, so it'll allow you to hold the gun down longer without overheating them. Well, since your guns are still working, let's get into tip number three. Crew points. Crew points in War Thunder are actually quite vital to your potential performance in a match. And if you want to keep up with some of the better players, you need to make sure you have a good crew. To access the crew point screen, you simply go to the bottom of your screen, right click and click the crew button. You'll notice four tabs at the top, but the first one we'll be focusing on is pilot. Okay, so I'm going to make this as simple as possible for you. Keen vision and awareness are going to help you with spotting planes. If you want to learn more about each individual skill, you can hover over their stat cards and it'll tell you exactly how they affect it. G tolerance and stamina are probably the most important things you can do here, which is going to affect how fast you can black out and how long it'll take and vitality is just your pilot's health defensive armament has similar stats it's just affecting the gunners of your bomber or whatever plane may have a gunner on it if you're not flying bombers or anything with gunners on it i typically wouldn't worry about this but your number of experienced gunners are what's going to matter the most here followed by fire accuracy and precision jumping into logistical services everything's pretty important here so level these up as you can as well and make sure you keep it up with your repair rank because you need to scale that with the rank of the plane that you're using. Otherwise, your crew won't be able to repair. And for the last tab, qualifications. Your first tier qualification is going to be expert. 
and that's a good way to lose lions I will say so don't do it unless you really like the plane that you're flying and you intend to fly it a lot and it's just going to give you three additional skill points on most of those skills that we've just talked about you can go to the next level for another two additional points and get the ace but that typically costs golden eagles and all these prices scale based on how high the plane is in battle rating now that you have some crew points it's time to get some skill points with number four throttle management Throttle management is one of those things that especially if you're new to the game, you're gonna overlook. Initially, you're probably doing a lot of W keying, and honestly, in the short term, that's probably your best bet. But sometimes it's not your best bet to overshoot the opponent, but maybe to match their speed before you get to them. And who can forget overheating your engine? And overheating your engine is just another reason to take you out of the fight and put you back to base or send you into the ground. So make sure you're watching those temps and adjusting your throttle accordingly. However, those aren't the only things. As you spend more time and you get more skilled at War Thunder, you'll find that throttling down can cause an opponent to overshoot and maintaining a constant speed on your aircraft can be beneficial because every plane has a speed in which it turns the best at. And maintaining that speed can and will be what dictates the dogfight for you. Number five, target prioritization. If you've ever wondered how people regularly get two, three, four, even five kills a game, it's because they're going after the right targets. And honestly, this is where knowledge is power, as there are three major components to prioritizing target. One is gonna be their altitude in relation to you, which of course an opponent that is above you is typically more dangerous. Your opponent's energy state, or essentially how fast they're going, and the type of plane that they're in. Just because you're in a bomber and you're above the enemy does not mean that they don't pose a great threat to you. So what's the major takeaway from all this? You should generally be going towards the target that poses the greatest threat to you. So if it's a fresh match, go for the guys that are highest, that are fighters, and then work your way down. Hypothetically, if you're in a furball and nobody's directly turning into you, your best bet is to shoot at somebody that's lining up a teammate. It's all a lot of common sense, and it's something you'll get better at as you play the game more. Well, you're not going to get any better just sitting here. Let's get into tip number six. Belt. As I'm sure you've noticed, there are many types of belts in War Thunder, and having the right belt selected can drastically decrease your time to kill on an opponent. In air combat, high explosive is king, as high explosive tends to shear off parts of planes and do the most damage. So usually, most planes with high explosive offer a belt called air targets. However, pay attention to the belts and see which ones have more high explosive in series. And for the planes that don't have high explosive in their belts, typically incendiary and tracer are gonna be the things that set fires that are gonna help you get kills, and a good mix of armor piercing in those rounds are also good too, so that the rounds can shred through components and take down planes in other ways. So in general, you should not prioritize the belts modification unless you're absolutely struggling with the gun, but picking the right belts once you have it can definitely make a difference. Number seven, different altitude performance. If you're a Russia main, this should come at no surprise to you, but altitude affects performance. And it really comes down to what engine setup your plane has, as planes like the P-47 have superchargers that can force air into the engines at higher altitudes, allowing them to perform even better up in the thin air, as there's less drag up there, slowing your plane down. While stack cards tend to be half-truths in War Thunder, and you shouldn't always rely on them, a good way to tell if a plane is good at high altitude performance is by looking at the altitude at which their top speed is achievable. The planes that tend to have their top top speed achievable around 3,000 meters are usually low altitude fighters. With planes that have their top speed achievable over five, six, even 7,000 meters, typically means that they're set up for high altitude performance. And for the high altitude planes, this doesn't mean you need to climb up all the way to the altitude. It just means that you need to keep in mind that your plane will typically flourish above 4,000 meters. So stay fast and let's get into tip number eight. Quick landings. Okay, so this is the part where you're gonna have to accept that War Thunder is a game, and if you're in it for just performance, the belly landing is the quickest way to stop. And coupled up with your good crew skills, you can be back up off the ground in no time. Another thing is that when you approach the airfield, approach at a high rate of speed, as you can always bleed your speed off by performing S turns at 0% throttle. You'll bleed off speed very quickly that way, and your main goal is to get your plane under 600 kilometers an hour. The slower you land, the better, but prioritize getting to the ground, and sometimes you'll damage your plane a little bit. Practice definitely makes perfect with this method. Another fun fact is some higher tier aircraft are equipped with a drag chute, which is activated by Alt-G if you're playing on PC, and these planes tend to slow down really fast with that. Well, we've made it through eight tips. I want to remind you guys to hit that like button if you found this video informative. And if you're an old timer just cruising by, make sure you're hitting that like button so we can get the video out to the newer players. Well, anyway, here we go with tip number nine, tracking your target. 
Now keeping track of your target doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be staring at them the whole time. Sometimes, for brief periods of time, it's okay to look around to gain situational. However, there's a term amongst the fighter pilot community. Lose sight, lose the fight. If you don't know where your bandit is, you won't be able to react to what he's doing, and it's a quick way to lose a fight. A major component to any good War Thunder player's gameplay is always using the free look button. If you can teach yourself to keep track of the target, especially in the crucial moments, you can predict moves and get the advantage on your opponent. So keep your head on a swivel, and let's get in a tip number 10 settings of course in war thunder as in any game there's always some settings to change and especially if you're a new player you probably haven't changed any of these or don't even know that they're there now at the end of this section i'm gonna scroll through all my settings so you can copy them if you want to take a look at everything that i have as far as air battle stuff however the most important ones that i feel that should be highlighted for you starting in the common settings is turn off join in progress some people don't mind this however if you're joining into a game 30 45 seconds late that's a huge disadvantage especially if you need to climb to get your advantage in a plane that's because within a minute a plane can typically generate about a thousand meters of altitude if not more depending on which plane you're in. Next up in your air battle setting, and this is one that I've fairly recently changed, is turn off autopilot and gunner sight. That way, you can point your plane in the direction that you want to fly and still shoot the enemies without auto leveling back out. It is a nuisance, and you'll find out if you leave it on. This one's a little bit of a preference, but I recommend changing your crosshair color to red. There's a lot of options to change a lot of different colors. However, green is the most common color in the world, and red is the opposite of green, therefore making it stand out against most backgrounds. Now for your airspeed display settings, you're going to want to enable true airspeed and indicate airspeed. True airspeed is going to give you a readout of exactly how fast you're actually going, and indicated airspeed is going to give you a readout of speed based on your altitude. Why is this important to have indicated airspeed? Well, it gives you a good idea of how your plane's going to perform. If you've ever tried to turn at 300 kilometers an hour versus 500 kilometers an hour, you're going to notice there's a difference at ground level. So having a readout of your indicated airspeed is going to give you some information vital to making decisions such as entering dogfights and making maneuvers. Next up is your altitude display, and I'm actually not going to lie, as I was making this, I I just found this one out. There's an option for barometric altitude and radar altitude. The barometric altitude is going to give you the traditional altitude readout, essentially telling you how far you are above sea level, whereas radar is going to tell you how close you are to hitting the ground. And I'm sure you can figure out why that's important. You can also set the distance above the ground where the readout turns red, and that's totally up to you. I just set it to 200 because once you're below 200, you're close to the ground. And the final one in air battle settings is auto jettison. This just gets rid of your containers after you empty them out. So dumping all the rockets out of a rocket pod or whatever it may be, gonna automatically drop them once they're empty, which is something that you should be doing anyway, but this just turns that into an automated function. The next is battle interface, and you're gonna notice three here. Ammo, engine temps, and fuel. By default, they will not display your ammo, fuel, or anything until it is what I would consider critically low, and I find it pretty important to just have a constant readout. So go ahead and turn these to always on, and let's move over to the last one here, and that is your instructor. I'm not entirely sure if I have all these tweaked, however, the most important one here is the auto restrict controls near the ground. And while it could save you if you're a newer player, I would say it's more important to have the freedom to control your plane how you need when you're at the ground, therefore giving you the best opportunity to save your ass. So here's my air battle settings, as promised. Feel free to pause them and copy these settings, but do yourself a favor and at least try to look over some of these things because you never know what you might find. Well, that about wraps it up for today, and I want to thank those of you who've stuck around and maybe even learned a thing or two. We now have channel memberships available to the channel, so if you want to watch any of my content before it goes live to everybody else, and you want to support the channel, feel free to become a member, as we will continue to post informative content, and soon, some good old-fashioned gameplay. Because I promise you, I sometimes still struggle. And special thanks to everybody who helped me work on this video, as I definitely could not have done it without you guys. Well, make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Fly safe.